The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Welcome everybody. This is the Habits of Health webinar and we are excited to have people from all over the country tonight sharing in learning how we can better reach our health goals. Welcome to the Optavia Health Call tonight. This Habits of Health, Habits of Health Call is a place that we get to be real and learn new tactics and new techniques and, and some of the basic science behind what works with our program. So we're excited that you're joining us tonight. I'm Dr. Geraldine Brosfield, and I am a certified health coach and a physician who uses Optavia in my practice. So we're excited that you're joining us tonight. If you're joining us tonight, go ahead and sign in. Give us a little heads up in the chat box if you have a question. We are um, a growing community that is committed to supporting each other. And the beautiful thing about this program is that it is a program that produces predictable results. So we're going to talk about the science behind those predictable results tonight because it honestly gives you a little bit of extra knowledge so that you can be successful in the long run in reaching your health goals. So like I said, I'm Dr. Gerilyn Brosfield. About um, eight years ago, I started using the Optavia program, and I just want to take a moment to make a disclaimer here that if you are using this program to lose weight and um, you know, making an amazing change towards your, towards your health, it's always great to talk to your healthcare provider and um, get their, get their onboard um, support with you. And we know that certainly a lot of the pieces of this program, while they've been safe and used over and over, are things you should talk about with your doctor. So just wanted to make that statement first. When I started using Optavia about eight years ago, I had um, been working with my patients over and over without a system that was predictable in their results. And so I was honestly extremely discouraged. I felt like I had been failing my patients because they were not achieving lifestyle change. And I was looking for something that would be consistent and predictable in its results. And honestly, one of the very first patients in my office who came onto the program is someone who is still a dear friend and has now chosen to pay this whole um, program forward and is helping other people, and that was Shauna. And Shauna had an extremely high level of inflammation when she came into my office. She had been on many, many weight loss programs and had been overweight really since middle school. And so when Shauna was on the program, we ended up kind of watching and seeing what would happen with the rest of her markers around inflammation. And she was losing weight beautifully. But honestly, one of the reasons I had made an impassioned request to her to go on program was because her inflammatory markers were sky high. And when the C-reactive protein is really high, we know that inflammation is in the system and is really actually putting the person at risk for heart disease. And I was very worried that she would not come back after the summer and begged her to go on program. She eventually did. And what we noticed was that as she lost weight, her own symptoms of inflammation and her own lab tests really normalized to a point that she got back to a level of inflammation that was at a stellar athletic level instead of a very sick level. So I wanna talk a little bit tonight about inflammation and the connection to your blood sugar. Inflammation, I think so many of us have heard of inflammation as sort of the end all be all of bad things, right? We know that inflammation is connected to so many disease states. And what we're noticing in all of the research in the medical world is that if you look at almost all of the disease states in our country, they all start with inflammation as the first domino. And I like to think of it 
a little bit like, you know, the lines of dominoes and some of those great championships where they line up domino next to domino next to domino. Well, there's always the first domino. And if you were to take a person with diabetes or you were to take a person with pulmonary disease or cancer or heart disease and step back and rewind their life, if you could rewind to the very first triggers that started the disease process for them, inflammation would be that beginning domino. And so when we look at how do we reverse disease and how do we help people achieve health, we know that inflammation is really one of the targets that's probably the most profound thing we can alter or change in order to create health in a person's life. So if we go back to inflammation and say, well, gosh, what causes inflammation? We can really start to look at some very simple lifestyle choices that impact our inflammation level in our body. So inflammation tends to be caused predominantly, if anything, the most consistent cause of inflammation in our society is the way we eat. And this is an example from Dr. Anderson's Habits of Health book. Many of you have used this book. This is such a great guide. Let me put it up here where you can see it. But this is such a great guide. And this picture is from Dr. Anderson's book. And in this picture, we see a depiction of the blood sugar as the blue line and the insulin level as the red dotted line. So how many of you have had a diet like this at some point in your life? If you've lived this life, I want you to make a little comment in the chat, chat box and tell me how you felt. Did you feel vibrant? Did you feel awesome? Did you feel great? Or were you like me where I would dash out of the house, maybe an orange juice if I was lucky, or maybe a coffee with a lot of creamer and sugar in it, and by 10 in the morning, I was in this very first valley um, right here of what I call frantic. And if you think about what happens when you've had a blood sugar crash, anybody want to say, just put a note in the chat box with me if you've had this experience. But literally, have you ever had like that horrific blood sugar crash where you're kind of frantic because you know you've got to get some food in and you feel awful? Well, this pattern of a blood sugar spiking way up high and then crashing way down low, and in my office for years, this meant I was literally stomping down the hallway looking for chocolate. Um, and it's no wonder that the coffee hour in the morning about 10 o'clock is consistent with this crash in our lives. We go out the door either with no breakfast or a really awful breakfast from the standpoint of sustaining us, and then we crash about 10 o'clock and we are searching for something. And what's the usual thing, right? It's either donuts and coffee or maybe a bagel if you think you're doing really well. But a bagel, we're going to talk a little bit more about this in a minute, isn't really great at sustaining a stable blood sugar. So once again, you spike a blood sugar up and have another crash. So this pattern of spiking blood sugar and crashing blood sugar is a culprit in our society that leads to feeling frantic and anxious. In fact, one of the first things I do in my practice for patients with anxiety is help them stabilize their blood sugar because it diminishes their anxiety. But when this crashing and spiking is happening, the other part of the picture is that insulin from our pancreas is being secreted in order to put this blood sugar away. So this dotted red line demonstrates how insulin will rise when I have a rise in blood sugar and it puts the blood sugar away and causes the blood sugar to come back down. But when insulin is high all the time, there's another really unfortunate truth, but it's the number one thing that we need to understand around how to sustain long-term health. So what happens when insulin is high all the time? Well, insulin is a switch. And so when insulin is really high, it actually causes our body to burn carbs. It pr makes us preferentially use the sugar that's in our system and burns it up. And because there's so much of it, it stores it as fat. So when your insulin is staying high all day long because of that rise and fall to that blood sugar, you end up storing your fat. But if insulin could stay low, if it could sort of be near normal or barely bumping along with a little rise in insulin each time we ate, we would stay in fat burning. And that makes a huge difference because when insulin stays high, we really know that the person will end up storing fat. And it's demonstrated again, just if we look at that um, diagram, 
that higher level of insulin, this red dotted line that keeps rising every time we eat, essentially correlates with storing fat. So if we have this high insulin all day long because of the way we're eating, we're gonna end up storing this food as fat. So we have an alternative. It looks kind of like this. This is a scenario where a person would eat a low glycemic index meal. I'm gonna explain what that is in a minute. And if you know what that is, if you know what low glycemic means, I want you to put a note in the chat box because that'll help us share some of our knowledge with each other. But a low glycemic meal will raise your blood sugar a little you'll see this little bump, but it won't spike it sky, sky high. And because of that, the amount of insulin your body puts out is just a small amount to deal with that small meal, and you don't have this overreaction and crash of your blood sugar going really low and becoming frantic and lightheaded and unfortunately not very nice and a little bit irritable when we're in that low blood sugar state. This is the alternative that is incredible in that it produces health results that allow our body to lower that insulin and keep it, this little dotted red line, keep it really close to baseline because we're eating small frequent meals. It's kind of like in the old days when maybe my great grandma would have had a wood stove. If they had built a huge fire in that wood stove and then tried to bake bread on top of that stove, it would have burnt the bread. But if there's a small stoking the fire all day long with a little bit of fuel every couple hours, then you keep a steady amount of heat. And our metabolism is a little bit like that. We can stoke our metabolism with a little bit of intake that barely bumps our insulin up every two to three hours, and it'll keep our insulin level steady, and that translates to less inflammation in the system. It's really this steady state that is the key factor to any weight loss program that works. And so when you're on the five and one, this is actually what you're achieving in your body. And Optavia has done a beautiful job at making it really simple to do this by making every meal replacement a low glycemic meal replacement that you can use to fuel your body every two to three hours. Dr. Anderson has written the Habits of Health book, and in the Habits of Health book, there are some beautiful ways to almost make it like dummy proof. If you want like low glycemic eating for dummies, this is the book. Um, in Dr. Anderson's book, he talks a lot about the, the color-coded shopping system. And that color-coded shopping system uses the glycemic index. So what is that? I see that some of you have posted what that is in the chat box, and that's exactly what I want you to do, is say it in words that make sense, because sometimes I say it in words that are a little bit too complicated. But if we break it down to the most simple way to say it, the glycemic index is a ranking. It's a system that ranks food on a scale of one to 100, and 100 would be just like sugar. If I just ate pure sugar, 50 grams of pure sugar, I would have a glycemic index of 100. But if I eat foods like raspberries or edamame, they have different effects in my system. And so for instance, edamame has a glycemic index of 20, whereas french fries have a glycemic index of 85. And so foods that are lower on the glycemic scale will raise my blood sugar less. So if we look at the way we eat and we say, okay, what can I do to help keep my blood sugar steady? We can use Dr. Anderson's color coding shopping plan. And this is a great way to use the Habits of Health book. I'm gonna show you a couple pages selected out of his book, but these pages are like about 100 to 106 in the Habits of Health book where there are coded um, diagrams that can help you in your shopping list to eat lower glycemic choices. So in the color-coded shopping plan, Dr. Anderson has marked the foods that are low glycemic with an, a glycemic index that's below 50. He's marked those in green. And then things that are in orange are kind of in the mid-range. And things that are in red, honestly, are not helpful foods. Most of them are things we should avoid or use extremely rarely. So if we think a little bit and look at some examples of the glycemic index, um, let's look at, for instance, what that would look like um, for a couple different foods. So let's look at vegetables. This is from Dr. Anderson's Habits of Health, and it's about vegetables. So here's the beautiful thing. This is why in your lean and green meals, you can eat all those green vegetables as part of your lean and green meal, and your best choices are gonna be these lower glycemic choices. So looking at things like zucchini or bell peppers or all the, all the spicy peppers, honestly, lower glycemic index, 
Um, but all of these green foods are quite low in their impact on our body. They don't have much sugar in them and they have a lot of fiber. So they actually are low glycemic. When we're on the five and one and in really a weight loss phase, we actually avoid things like green peas and cooked carrots and beets, some of the root vegetables that have higher sugar contents because they have a higher glycemic index and they'll let our body move into burning sugar instead of burning fat. And by choosing low glycemic foods consistently, we let our body stay in a fat burning state and we just stay in that incredible zone where we're burning fat for our fuel and we have enough intake using the five in one and our Optivia meals and our lean and green to sustain our organs and keep everything safe so that we don't lose any muscle during that process. Another example um, from Dr. Anderson's book is the fruits page. So notice that there's some things, I tend to think of olives and avocado as vegetables, but they're in the low glycemic index and they're allowed um, in small amounts when you're on the five and one. But a lot of our fruits are actually not helpful in the weight loss phase because they're a little higher glycemic. So we don't use those when we're on the five and one, but when you're moving into transition and maintenance and you're starting to add your fruit back in, your safest method is to pick fruits in the low glycemic index range because those are not gonna spike that blood sugar. If we tend to then take these um, principles of lowering our glycemic index and say, well, what else can I do? There's some interesting tricks. And again, this is from Dr. Anderson's book. One of the things you can do is add lemon juice or vinegar to your food. So this may sound strange to you if you haven't tried it, but honestly, it's excellent. And in the chat box, if this is something you've done before, give us your best hacks on some of the things you've added to lower glycemic um, index. Salsas, chili peppers, our spices like cinnamon and um, cilantro and actually even things like uh, chili, literally chili, all the hot stuff helps lower glycemic index. Lemon juice, believe it or not, is great squeezed on any of your greens. So like your spinach, your kale, lemon juice is great. A little vinegar or lemon juice on green beans is actually amazing. Um, and then the other thing to know is that any processed food gets into your bloodstream faster. So this sounds a little gross, but this may make it stick in your head. Pureed food, what do we give babies and really, really old people? We give them pureed food, right? Because it's easier to digest. Well, that's the opposite of what you wanna do when you're trying to help your body with glycemic index. The more whole the food and the more fiber it has in it, the slower it is going to be to impact your blood sugar. So one of the reasons I suggest that we not use white flour is that white flour is our most processed form of wheat and it will get into your blood sugar so much faster than if you were eating like whole wheat groats or whole oats, steel cut oats have a lower glycemic index than rolled oats, for instance. And just a note, when you're on the five and one, some of these foods we actually fully avoid when you're in a weight loss phase. Like we don't use flour-based foods when you're in a weight loss phase. The only flour-based foods you might use would be maybe a whole, whole grain. Um, but if you're looking at your, um, your lean and green, there's really no flour-based foods in it. So this is a little bit more about when you start to move into transition and add some foods back in. The more um, fiber in your food, the more whole food options you eat, the better. Nature has put some amazing breaks, if you want to think of it that way, into our, um, into our food sources. And so when we eat whole food, it has fiber already packaged in it. That's the beautiful thing, is that if I have, you know, spinach or if I have kale or broccoli or Brussels sprouts, all of those foods are filled with fiber that slow down the speed of that blood sugar rise. Fat actually also slows our blood sugar rise. And so things like our olive snack or having a little bit of healthy um, avocado or olive oil with our meal will actually slow down the blood sugar rise. Another trick is that if you can slow down how you eat, I sometimes have to slow down how I talk because I move quickly and people have to catch up. When you're eating, use the same principle. My mom always told me, chew your food 35 times, and I swear, try it sometimes. Any of you that have tried that, maybe note for me in the chat box what that's like, but see how, maybe try it and see how many chews you can get in 
um, before you have to swallow. For me, it's more like the 15 to 20 zone. But mindfulness is one of the benefits of slowing down and eating our food. But there's another really interesting scientific reason to do this, and that is that it takes 20 minutes for the food to get from my mouth down into my intestines. And in the intestines, there's this magic, um, it's a hormone that gets released when the food comes by that sends a message back up to the brain to say, you're full, you've had enough. And if you eat super fast, you will actually get all the food past that little switch before it has time to send the message back up to the brain. So just slowing down actually lets you feel full because you give yourself time for the message to get from your intestines back up to the brain and let you know, hey, I've had enough. Actually, this is enough food and I'm satisfied. Once again, using the least processed, blended or mashed, literally, I now visualize orange juice like an IV bag of, of sugar. It's a no, not ever, and, and it really is the kind of food that just goes directly to your bloodstream. So it's not the kind of thing that we ever wanna do in weight loss because it spikes us right out of fat burning. Protein uses more calories to digest. It's harder to break down for the body. And so by having protein every time you eat, you actually maximize nature's own system of slowing down the blood sugar rise. And that's actually why our Optivia, Optivia fuelings have protein in every single one of them. When we look at a label, just to give you a framework of really why we want to read labels, just to notice here, this um, label on the left is a Yoplait yogurt. And I just want to comment, if you look at this total carbohydrate on the Yoplait yogurt, it's 26 grams. That's the same as a Coca-Cola. And so as much as we have been sort of raised to think yogurt's a health food, you really want to look for labels that have a better ratio where there's more protein as compared to your carbohydrates. So on the right, this is actually a seed and nut cracker that has only eight grams of carbohydrate, and, but has 12 grams of protein. And so that's something where that protein being a little higher than the carbohydrate or close to equal to it is gonna be much more stabilizing on your blood sugar versus the Yoplait that's gonna spike your blood sugar because of not only this total amount of carbohydrate being high and much different, much higher than the protein, but also the fact that it has added sugars. So takeaways, and I'm just curious, many of you on the call tonight are probably on the five and one, and I'm curious for those of you who have used the five and one to reach your weight loss goals, I'd like for you to step in for a minute and make a little comment if you're still eating every three hours. Because one of the big fears that people have with our program is they, they literally have tried lots of diets, and what do we know about diets? They don't work. Why don't they work? They don't work because they're just a time-limited thing that we do and then we go back to our pattern. And the difference with Optivia is that when you start your health journey with Optivia and you start fueling every three hours, you're making a choice to take care of yourself for the rest of your life. And that does not go away just because you reach your healthy weight. So I'm curious in our comment box, if you have used this protocol and you've been on the five and one and reached your healthy weight, I'm noticing on the call a lot of you that I know have reached your healthy weight. Do you still eat every three hours? One of the kindest ways that you can self-care and self-nourish yourself is to still keep eating and fueling every three hours. It doesn't have to be a lot. It can be your little meal replacement size. But when you eat every three hours, you help steady your blood sugar and you keep your body in a low inflammatory state. So these three steps, the eating a small meal or fueling every three hours, having protein every time you eat, avoiding carbohydrates and sugar. Those are lifelong habits. Other things that I'll just mention as we think about other ways to optimize and, and make sure that we stay successful in the long term are listed here. And I want to just say them out loud because if you've had a bad day, if you've had a day to day where you slipped off your own kind of goals and you didn't do as well as you wanted to. I just want to encourage you to pick one of these things on this page and do it tonight before you go to bed. I often say, if you screw up your program, go get a glass of water and you're back on track. So this is not about perfection. It's about living our lives and doing better and better to take care of ourselves. And just in the same way that every time we get on the airplane, they tell us to put our own mask on first before we would help others around us if there was a crisis, 
this methodology of doing these things for yourself, these are the keys. This is how you live a healthy life so that you can do what God puts you on this earth to do. And so if we think about the small fuelings five to six times a day, that's about every two to three hours that you have your small meal that's got some protein and is a limited amount of carbohydrates. So non-processed foods is kind of an easy way to do that. Um, or using your Optavia program, um, you know, your fuelings. Hydrating, water is so, so key. When we break fat down, it breaks up into water and breath. And so we breathe it out and we pee it out. So if you're not in the bathroom all the time, you're not drinking enough water. Sleep is absolutely key. Dr. Anderson calls sleep nature's nurse and it's the time frame of our day when our body can reset and refuel and also clean up um, as we sleep. Movement is something you wanna talk with your coach about when it's appropriate to start to fit it back into your life. It is absolutely a key to long-term success. And I just want to say more than anything, this group, like you're doing tonight, being on our call, connecting with your support system is absolutely key to a successful long-term healthful life. And so whatever that is, build your posse, build your group, make sure that you've got people to hang around with that have similar goals to you because that's going to, that's going to actually ensure your success in the long run. And I want to actually just mention the last item here. If we really look at putting these pieces into place and then practicing gratitude and paying that forward because a grateful heart has to share, right? I don't know if any of you have some things that you're especially grateful for right now. I'm so happy for you to put it in the chat box because just the action of speaking your gratitude changes your own dynamics. It changes your neurotransmitters and puts your, your mind in a better place, which is such a key part of reaching a healthy, healthy life. So I hope that some of the tips we've covered today have been helpful. Um, if nothing else, if you've gone off program today, go get a glass of water. Put something into the chat box right now that you're grateful for so that you've practiced gratitude at least in a little way today. And all I can say is thank you to Optavia and thank you all for being on the call tonight because the changes in our lives are things that we can share and make our world a better place. So I'm so grateful that you've all been here with us tonight. This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.